is, um, as Vesta mentioned, quite challenging and um, challenging circumstances globally. So wherever you are, I hope you're staying safe. Um, my name is Nenad. I work as a regional uh, project manager at the Terdezon Regional Office uh, for Europe, based in Budapest. And uh, as Vesta introduced, um, I'm also managing the regional project called Bridge, which is focusing specifically on uh, gender-based violence, which is affecting children and youth uh, on the move, so migrants, so children and youth. Uh, within this project, we are working uh, in partnership with a number of organizations in a number of countries, namely Defense for Children International and uh, Pedazil in Belgium, the NGO Arsis in Greece, uh, NGO Copin in Malta, and uh, Terdezon Romania. This project, the Bridge Project, is supported by the European Union's uh, Rights, Equality, and Citizenship Program 2014-2020, and we are essentially aiming with this project to strengthen the statutory response to gender-based violence, uh, as I said, which is affecting children and youth on the move. Uh, as part of the project, we have been organizing a number of webinars uh, thus far. This is actually the eighth webinar that uh, we have organized within this project. And we are organizing these webinars uh, for the purpose to discuss issues of gender-based violence uh, and shared information exchange uh, on practices. Uh, on initiatives, knowledge, uh, and learning. And uh, in this webinar today, uh, we have the uh, pleasure uh, to have Ms. Anja Petrovic from, um, I hope you can all hear me well, I got the notification, uh, it's fine. Um, so we have uh, the pleasure to have Ms. Anja Petrovic, who will be presenting uh, uh, to us uh, a study called Room for Women and Girls, Female Voices from Refugees and Migrants in Serbia. Uh, this study was uh, uh, basically presents 91 testimonies of women and girls uh, from a number of countries who were settled in an asylum center in Belgrade, in Serbia. And this webinar will give uh, the listeners the opportunity to receive first-hand information about the experiences of migrant women and girls in the asylum center in Serbia, but also the challenges that they, uh, that they face, uh, their experiences, in relation to their access to education, issues of health, well-being, safety, and also gender-based violence, uh, resilience, uh, and empowerment. Um, so a few words about, about the speaker. Uh, Anja Petrovic works as a project manager at Adra's Women's Center in Belgrade, Serbia. Uh, the Women's Center provides a safe space for um, various types uh, of uh, services, assisting refugee and migrant girls uh, and women who are presently accommodated in an asylum center in Belgrade. Uh, she is a social worker with experience in preventing and responding to gender-based violence and has spent uh, the last four years uh, working with refugee and migrant women and girls on different levels, entailing case management, facilitating gender-based violence workshops, research, advocacy, and also conducting uh, training uh, trainings for professionals. So I would uh, like to thank Anja uh, for, for her time today and uh, for being available to present to us the study. And I hope that you, would all, you will all enjoy, uh, enjoy this webinar. So thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone from my staff also. I hope you're all well and uh, healthy. Um, thank you for um, participating today. Uh, my name is Anja Petrovic and I'm working uh, for ADRA Serbia, uh, which stands for uh, Adventist Development and Relief uh, Agency. Um, firstly, I would like to thank uh, Mia Kisic for bringing this uh, idea uh, about the research and for making the whole process and uh, study to look like it is now. Uh, also, at the beginning, I would love to thank UNICEF for supporting uh, ADRA's Women's Center and GBV programs. So, um, when we are speaking about the migration, uh, we need to know that the gender plays a really significant uh, role. Uh, evidence shows uh, that uh, women are in, uh, disproportionately in the high risk of experiencing uh, GBV in a war. Also, it is harder for them to flee uh, if something uh, in their countries happen 
and uh, also if they e manage to leave the country during the transition, uh, they are in a high risk to, exper uh, to experience um, various forms of uh, gender-based violence uh, or human trafficking. Um, being settled uh, in uh, different settlements, uh, reception and asylum centers, they are also more exposed uh, to the violence. And once they reach a country of uh, destination, uh, it is more likely that they will not be included, for example, in the uh, labor market or that uh, they will work in a gray economies uh, more than uh, men. So um, a lot of uh, research uh, shows a lot of uh, protection risks uh, uh, that can uh, happen working uh, with uh, migrants and refugee girls and women. And um, inaccessible services and lack of a safe space um, those are additional challenges uh, when we want to respond uh, on the needs of the women and the girls. So, uh, oh, I don't know what it is. So, um, like, a central goal of, of uh, this uh, study was to uh, examine and the girls uh, while they were staying uh, in Serbia. A uh, methodology that we used uh, strongly uh, relies on a feminist perspective. So uh, without taking a female perspective into account, when we are speaking about women, uh, it is not possible to have a comprehensively, uh, comprehensive understanding uh, of their position and the needs. Uh, data collection was placed from February to December 2018 in Belgrade. Um, and we uh, had uh, two uh, main methods. Uh, first one was uh, uh, semi-structured interviews, uh, who, uh, which aimed to, uh, to map uh, major challenges uh, that women and girls are facing. After that, we conducted a series of focus group discussion uh, to discuss some of the topics uh, mapped uh, in those uh, individual interviews. And should, um, we spoke with uh, 91 uh, women, to be more exact, uh, with the 64 women and 27 girls, uh, aged 13 to 64, uh, Afghanistan, Iran, and uh, Pakistan. This uh, study has several uh, limitations, and one of them is that uh, this study doesn't give um, a general, uh, a general um, knowledge about some topics, uh, rather um, highlighting uh, individual uh, experiences. Um, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, structure of the respondents uh, reflect structure in asylum center Krnjača in the same, in the same period uh, study took place. And uh, I need to say that um, we focused on uh, female voices, uh, especially uh, we know that uh, a lot of challenges are shared between uh, men and uh, women during the day, but we put the focus on uh, female voices. And I need to say that uh, this uh, study didn't aim to uh, assess quality of existing services, rather to give you uh, deeper insight uh, and, and to understand um, better uh, women and girls in Serbia. Um, Knowledge about everyday life of our beneficiaries uh, can help us uh, to improve and to adapt programs to be accessible, adequate, and available for, uh, for specific groups. And understanding uh, of everyday life might help us uh, to prevent uh, GBV uh, better. Uh, so this is why our first chapter is dedicated to this uh, topic. So. Uh, time spent uh, in asylum center, uh, which uh, our women uh, consider as a temporary place, uh, is marked uh, as uncertain, repetitive, and uh, really confusing. Um, having in mind the specific uh, needs of the women, experiences uh, of such facilities are different for the men and the women. Uh, girls and women uh, spend a significant amount of the time uh, in their rooms. If they leave the room, they are managing to come back before the lunch, while others uh, are coming back by the evening hours. How regular day looks like uh, for the most of the women, uh, we can see, and um, I will give you a few seconds to read.
So um, for most women, especially uh, those with the children, um, describe uh, they're uh, expressing uh, uh, that they, their days are the same. Uh, and in this conversation, those traditionally prescribed roles uh, are prevailing. Um, some other women uh, said that uh, they uh, found occupational, recreational, educational activities they like, uh, they like to attend, but a significant number of them uh, still stays uh, in the room. And while staying in the room, uh, they are uh, mostly um, spending time on the internet or they are uh, painting. Uh, women with the children expressed that they have more challenges to attend these kind of activities. Um, and uh, for example, that their husbands doesn't have those kind of obstacles. Also, they reported the lack of support from their husbands uh, in everyday uh, activities. Um, all of the women agreed that there is a significant difference uh, in uh, everyday life between uh, men and women. Uh, when we are speaking about the social networks, which are really important for maintaining psychosocial uh, well-being, uh, women had different answers. They said that or they have a lot of friends or they uh, don't have friends at all because uh, they cannot trust anyone in asylum center. So if they are having friends and they are uh, gathering together with their friends, uh, it's more likely to be in the room. And they said that uh, room is the place that uh, women normally are gathering while uh, men are uh, spending their time outside and that is also considered as a normal uh, normal thing. Um, in their answers, you can easily see this uh, public-private division of the spaces. Uh, and uh, one of them said that behind of those beliefs is a culture that um, has stereotyped that women should stay at home. In this, in this case, in the room, um, while we are, when we are speaking uh, about the rooms, women reported the different um, challenges, and one of them are overcrowded rooms. Uh, most of them are facing um, uh, challenges uh, because uh, of uh, living in a small place with a lot of children. And one of them uh, even said, uh, because of too many people, I have a lack of sleep and no space to learn. And I cannot concentrate it to learn anything. Uh, so, but this answer is really common between um, most of the women we spoke uh, with. Um, uh, we spoke with uh, uh, our women about decision-making process. And for the unmarried women and the young girl, um, decision makers are almost always fathers and they need to listen their fathers and to um, obey their wish uh, due to respect. So uh, it is described as an imperative in a family, uh, but the uh, same standard doesn't affect on, uh, boys and the girls. So uh, most of them said that uh, expectation of the, from the girls to listen to their parents are much higher than for the boys. Um, there is a, a belief behind of that, that a girl uh, will one day marry and they, should, uh, they will continue to listen to uh, their husbands, uh, while, uh, while boys will become decision makers. Uh, so uh, they need to practice. Uh, and alternative for the father's authority could be uh, any, any other uh, male member in the family. Uh, for the married woman, decision makers are mostly husbands, but there are some uh, cases uh, that um, women said uh, that decision-making process uh, is the process uh, of the consultations between them and husband. Um, in, it is really interesting to say that uh, in all of those cases, uh, both men and women came from the family where mother was decision maker. Um, next thing that we were that we were researching uh, is uh, access to uh, education. So uh, worldwide, uh, about seventy percent of refugee children are enrolled in elementary school, and half of that number is in a high school. Girls uh, attend elementary school up to 50% uh, 
less than boys, while a percentage of the girls uh, enrolled in a high school uh, can drop uh, as low as 1%. This kind of uh, differences uh, can be understood if we take cultural uh, context uh, of the country of origin and the gender norms uh, inherit uh, to them. It's time to read this quote. So, um, in strong uh, patriarchy systems, girls' uh, access to the education can be really challenging. Even if they started with the school, um, entering adolescence often leads to complete dropout uh, from the education. Um, having adolescent girl in a school is mostly perceived as a shame uh, for some families, and this kind of attitude uh, doesn't affect uh, doesn't affect boys they are again treated differently and there is a one uh, quote that says uh, about that so priority is given to boys because parents have this thought that the girls will go to some other family and boys will stay to build a family and provide money for them also when we are speaking about education it is important to have a social political situation that really affects chances of the girls to attend the school. Afghanistan uh, becoming, is becoming one of the most restrictive environments uh, for female education. In certain regions, percent of the girls enrolled uh, in a school is low as 15%. And among adolescent girls, uh, there is a 37% literate uh, in comparison with 66% uh, adolescent literate boys. Even present a little bit different uh, image. Uh, women who were born there and who live there uh, told us that it's really common uh, to, for the girls to be um, enrolled in school, uh, also up to university level. Um, however, uh, gender norms are heavily uh, present in the fields of study deemed acceptable for the females and the males, and also uh, physical segregation between women and men uh, still, still exists. While staying in Serbia, sadly, norms and attitudes uh, towards film ed female education were reflected from the country of origin, mostly. And, uh, such attitudes mostly affected adolescent girls. Uh, some respondents stressed that um, mixed genders in a classroom are a major obstacle in, in enrolling girls uh, to school. Biggest concern of the family is that this will bring the shame uh, to the family. So one of the women said, uh, they are saying that girls and boys should not be together in the same place. They are concerned that boys and girls will become friends. That's not good, because they will fall in love and have sexual relations before the marriage. Um, there are some, there are some ex um, exceptions uh, that can show us how parents' own education reflects their attitudes towards education of their children. So one of the women said that her husband is really happy because of the uh, mixed uh, classes, uh, because he himself uh, went in school where the classes were mixed and he learned a lot uh, from this kind of experience. So he wants for his children to learn the same lectures. So as mentioned already, uh, adolescent girls uh, face more difficulties when we are speaking about the education. About half of the girls we spoke with were not involved uh, in a formal education in the moment uh, when we conducted the research. Uh, one of them never went to school uh, in her life. And on average, uh, girls were out of school for three years due to their uh, migration journey. Um, some uh, girls, if they, were, if they were attending the school, they were enrolled uh, in a hi uh, higher grades of elementary school, such as 7th and 8th, or they were attending the school for ado adults uh, before, uh, um, without uh, previous education. So there are additional challenges that uh, adolescent girls are facing. 
and uh, they are mostly about uh, how to dress and to uh, uh, how to deal with the wearing scarf in a country where scarf is not that common, but they need to respect their own, own, own culture. So they had a lot of challenges uh, regarding these things. Uh, they heard that there, there is a possibility for them to attend the high school, uh, but conditions uh, were not provided, so they didn't have tr uh, transportation or translation in, uh, for the high school. So uh, if they are staying uh, for more years in Serbia, they were repeating uh, the grades, 7th and 8th grade, or they uh, went again uh, in a school uh, for adults. Uh, many women included in this study uh, did, had not complete uh, their education and some of them were illiterate. Uh, they were attending uh, informal education classes, uh, but still there are many obstacles uh, for the women to attend those kind of activities. First uh, is definitely household commitments that didn't allow, allow women to attend the classes regularly. Uh, another one is a lack of previous education prevented most of them to, uh, to be educated now. For example, uh, mo uh, women who are illiterate on their own language had a lot of difficulties to learn even English. Uh, so, um, and the last one, but um, really common one, is the lack of motivation. And the lack, mo lack of motivation is a really is a really uh, widespread uh, uh, obstacle uh, when we are speaking about the uh, activities and the uh, willingness of the women to participate in. Next chapter that we were discussing with the women is really important and uh, it is about uh, health and well being. Uh, many refugees and migrants uh, experience significant obstacles in accessing these kind of services, even when they are settled in asylum and reception center or other uh, refugee settlements. Uh, women and girls are affected uh, by these challenges different than men uh, because their needs uh, uh, are different and uh, their vulnerabilities as well. So, uh, Everyday life in uh, refugee settlement and reception centers is perceived uh, with a lot of uh, uncertainty, uh, passiveness. Uh, many of the respondents disclose their concern uh, with the behavior of changes. Um, in betweenness, floating in life, and endless routine are some of the terms that uh, women used to express their uh, emotions while staying in asylum center. Uh, next quote uh, can describe uh, more. Again. Another challenge <clears throat> that uh, occurred in this um, conversation uh, is uh, anger and anger burst. Uh, women said that uh, this is, if this happens to the husbands and men in general, this can really affect the safety of the women. Uh, but they are also were really honest and they said that they themselves uh, cannot handle um, their uh, anger bursts, uh, for example, they were saying that uh, when children are playing and when they are too loud, uh, women cannot handle that and they are really shouting uh, on the children and after that they are uh, regretting really soon. Uh, they, can, they cannot um, cry alone also. They said that that's really difficult for them because sometimes they want to cry but there is a lot of people and too many kids in the room so uh, they uh, cannot even... Uh, uh, cry and release some uh, hardship. Um, psychological aid was not frequently mentioned uh, among the women when we were speaking about uh, overcoming the mental hardship, but I need to mention that the um, uh, majority of the women who had experience with the psychological aid found it really useful. 
and had really uh, positive um, experience with that. Uh, there are several reasons why women um, expressed, uh, and one of them is uh, housewife duties that prevents use uh, that are preventing uh, women to use this service over an extent period of time. Another common obstacle is stigma that is attached to those who are visiting a psychologist, and they were mostly um, for other people, uh, silly, insane, uh, and things like that. So many women uh, didn't express negative attitude uh, towards the psychological aid, but they said that in this moment, this kind of help uh, is not um, good for them. And they said that only thing that will help them uh, to feel mentally better uh, is uh, to cross the border and reach their uh, country of destination. Uh, most of the women said that uh, they are dealing with the um, psychological hardship uh, uh, through the occupational and recreational activities that they like to make themselves busy. Uh, and also they said that uh, they are uh, sharing the thoughts and, um, and worries uh, mostly with the family and uh, close friends. Um, when we are speaking about uh, physical and reproductive health, there are also challenges because uh, visiting a general practitioner and uh, gynecologist as well uh, was viewed as a very unpleasant experience for the most of participants. A lot of studies shows that a uh, cultural mediator uh, can be a really good bridge between the community uh, and the local um, health service. Uh, but women said that uh, they, even if they had a cultural mediator uh, with them, uh, this wasn't option uh, because the mediator was male or a doctor uh, was male as well. Um, some women uh, claim that uh, gender of service provider is only crucial uh, when we speak about um, cultural mediators or interpreters, uh, while doctors are seen as a professional, so their gender is not uh, that important. But uh, having a female cultural mediator uh, from their own countries, uh, instead of local, popula uh, local women uh, familiar with their uh, language, uh, is the best solution if we're speaking about the doctors. The subject of sexual and reproductive health showed to be a really big uh, taboo amongst uh, majority of the women and girls. Uh, even asking uh, for hygiene kits was often help uh, due to embarrassment. And um, uh, taking care of uh, one's own body during the menstrual cycle was reported uh, as uh, inadequate uh, due to lack of hygiene items uh, or knowledge. Um, a uh, vast majority of the girls included in this study didn't have knowledge uh, of their menstrual cycle uh, and, uh, um, and changes in puberty. So they said that they are not speaking with their mothers about that. Even if they try, mother would tell them that it is shameful uh, to talk about that. Um, Seeking uh, out the service of gynecologist uh, was viewed as a really awkward experience. And most of the women said that they gave up a lot of appointment, uh, appointments uh, when they saw that the uh, doctor is a male. Uh, also, the women who practiced uh, regular checkups uh, in the country of origin, they stopped in Serbia to doing that, even risking their health. Uh, they, they really recognize uh, the benefits of regular checkups and importance of prevention, uh, but uh, they are not visiting the doctors unless they have a really big uh, problem. Really big and uh, I, I would not say most important uh, part of our research uh, was uh, dedicated to the safety and gender-based uh, violence. So, GDV is one of the biggest challenges in the context of crisis response, uh, and it has been documented uh, in every uh, humanitarian crisis. Um, according uh, to the 
interviewed women, one of the major enabling factors for GBV is a wide acceptance and normalization of the violence. So this um, quote is saying about that. Also, uh, woman was uh, mentioned the tendency of the communities to always blame the women uh, for the violence. So one of the women said, if the husband beats the wife, everyone will think that, that for sure she deserves it uh, because otherwise he will not beat her. Um, many women reported uh, that they are uh, witnessing uh, violence against uh, women and girls and they mentioned that alcoholism and uh, substance abuse often led to violence. They also recognized the mental state and psychological pressure related uh, to migration as a cause of, uh, of violence. Um, many interviewed women described uh, how their marriages have been arranged by their parents since uh, their childhood. Early marriages are perceived as a solution for family problems, especially for the families that are struggling uh, with the poverty. Um, many women agreed that uh, one of the most uh, damaging factors of early marriages is that the girls are left isolated and have, have no one to turn to. So then said, some families forget their daughters as soon as they get married. She belongs to her husband and he can do whatever he wants. If he wants to kill her, he can do that. In Serbia, speaking uh, about the forced marriages, uh, women reported that these kind of practices are not made in Serbia to their knowledge. And they also reported some uh, possible positive changes regarding this issue. Uh, they were saying that uh, they heard about the family members who gave, uh, who gave up on marriage uh, arrangements while they reached in the Europe. Uh, one of them is considering to uh, tell her sister that she will give up uh, on their arrangement as well uh, because she promised her son um, to, uh, to uh, her first uh, cousin daughter. So she's really thinking to give up uh, on that um, arrangement now. So um, as a place uh, with a lot of people in restricted area, combined uh, with the lack of privacy and inability to control fully people's uh, behavior uh, is uh, cont contributing to the feeling of this discomfort uh, among uh, girls and women they mapped uh, two main uh, areas where they don't feel safe. One of them is um, uh, entrance in, fr in front of the center together with the bus station and another one uh, is uh, showers. So uh, one of the women said that she heard that uh, unaccompanied minors uh, have a tendency uh, to look uh, women while they are showering and another mother said that um, she uh, always make a company for her daughters while they are taking showers so she can uh, protect uh, these things uh, to happen. Because, um, uh, because of um, all of these things, like some women also said that um, even if in their own rooms, they are not feeling safe. Uh, for example, one of them said that um, she realized that uh, her blanket is missing and that someone was obviously in the room. Uh, also, uh, boys and single men, they know to knock on the windows and to um, molest uh, women, especially if they, uh, if they are uh, single and if they are uh, traveling alone. So one of the women even said that uh, she would choose an abusive husband uh, uh, over uh, rather than to be uh, alone uh, because single women are especially vulnerable to attacks of the men in a, in a center. Uh, being a woman uh, is, um, has its own challenges, but being a woman and a migrant or refugees adds another layer 
of uh, vulnerabilities and challenges. Um, numerous other aspects can uh, negatively um, affect safety of the women. For example, marital and living status, uh, ethnicity, different uh, health status, uh, sexuality, and things like that. In our study, we were speaking with the uh, women who are traveling alone and they are really facing a uh, lot of challenges and a lot of troubles because of that. Uh, also, we spoke uh, with the girls, um, uh, with the girl, I'm sorry, uh, who is, um, who, belongs to one of the ethnical minorities and she she passed through a lot of um, difficult times uh, because of because of that um, many women um, described that um, different forms of violence uh, they are, that they are uh, facing different forms of violence such as um, name calling uh, unwelcome comments and jokes uh, sexual gestures or staring, uh, spreading rumors and jokes about them. And this all affects uh, their dignity. Uh, and for some women, it is enough reason not to leave the room at all. Um, one, one woman said that uh, it's really hard uh, for herself because uh, she's not wearing scarf. Uh, and um, without scarf, she's perceived uh, like... Um, woman without uh, moral, uh, woman who is open, uh, who is single, um, and uh, boys are really uh, taking advantage on those uh, women. Uh, they also said, she also said that sometimes she feels that uh, she needs to um, look like a homeless so people will not stare at her. These things uh, really happen to adolescent girls as well, and they are suffering a lot of, uh, a um, lot of problems this kind uh, one of them said that um, it is really easy uh, for boys to make the rumors uh, how they saw um, some girls uh, with a boyfriend at the town and uh, they can do that just for fun so but that that will make a lot of problems for uh, for the girls cyberbullying is also one of the forms of violence that happens to the especially younger girls, but also women, young women. Um, there, is the, there is a different ways uh, for doing that, or boys uh, or men will uh, take the photo of the women and publish on their account and said that those women or girls are their lovers, or they will um, make a false account with the pictures of the certain women and girls, and then they will post um, uh, fake descriptions and uh, other things. This caused a lot of problems uh, for the girls and the women. Um, in this study, reasons uh, to hesitate to disclose potential violence ranged from stigma, fear, shame, and uh, isolation. Some respondents believe that uh, even uh, if, as I already said, that some of them believe that it's better to be in abusive marriage, that, that it is safer um, than to report the husband and stay alone in asylum center or in an immigration process uh, at all. Lack of encouragement and a sense of powerlessness uh, prevented many women to speak up. So this quote is about... So whoever wants to do something against GBV uh, needs someone to lean on, but we don't have that support. For men, this is acceptable, stands for violence. They are happy about it because they are feeling like they are kings. And we are quiet because we don't have any power to raise against them. So it is obviously that we need to put a lot of effort to change uh, this uh, image and to encourage and empower women uh, to stand for themselves or to realize how strong actually they are. And the last part of our research um, was dedicated to the resilience and empowerment of the women. Women and migrant uh, 
women and girls, migrants and refugees, should not be seen uh, as only passive victims of migration. It should be kept in mind that uh, migration can also uh, be viewed as a positive change uh, for the girls and women uh, in the long run. So as women suffer from additional levels of vulnerability in migration, it is uh, significant to take into account how they manage to bounce back from the challenges and support each other in the overcoming their uh, everyday problems. They're really, uh, they're really holding uh, uh, together. Uh, they're helping each other with the fem female responsibilities. Uh, they're uh, helping each other with the knowledge sharing. Uh, they are showing each other practical skills. And they are really, um, they are really making a strong uh, community. Um, Migration, as I said, can be a um, moment of empowerment for some women. So few, uh, several quotes about that I will read you now. Um, I travel by myself, so I need to take decision by myself. First, it was very hard to start making decisions alone, but actually it empowered me that I had to think, uh, I had to manage things by myself. There are always two sides. First, it was hard, but in the end, actually helped me to be more mature and stronger. Up on this journey, I left my country when I was 10 years old. If I had stayed in Afghanistan, I wouldn't speak English like I do now. I feel more comfortable to speak with other people now. Some skills that I know will help me to plan for the future. Other women need to find out what they are interested in so they can start learning and making money from that. So um, in any way, uh, girls and women in migratory process uh, will continue to meet uh, challenges and risks. And this is um, uh, why additionally, um, it's more important to learn about uh, how to improve our response to their needs. Uh, this is, this, there is a need uh, to move away, away from simply reflecting on their situation through research uh, towards implementing um, adequate practices uh, in all the sectors. So uh, at the end of this research, uh, you can find some recommendations. First one is that uh, establishing safe spaces for the women and girls is needed for them to channel their voices. Women and girls' voices and perspectives need to be placed in center of all our intervention if we want to make durable solution. Women, women's and girls' equal participation needs to be ensured in their daily lives through the establishment of an equal representation in communities and community-based structures. Also, refugee and migrant girls and women's voices are essential for advocacy and awareness raising, as well as ensuring durable solution and safety for all members of communities. Continuous engagement in qualitative participatory research focus on refugee and migrant girls and women is a crucial to deepen understanding of their situation and support knowledge sharing. So I really hope so that today I helped you understand a little bit more situation and position of the women and girls accommodated in uh, Serbia. Uh, those words are their own testimonies and uh, we wanted to present and not to represent them. So thank you once again for listening. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Anja, for your presentation. It was really, really interesting, um, especially the quotes that you shared. Uh, they were so strong, I felt anxious in, uh, in some of them uh, also. Uh, this one about empowerment of women when they are going through it by themselves and they learn how how to make decisions it's really like 
very, very strong and thank you for that. Uh, I'm also like you inviting people if they have any kind of questions or any kind of comments. For me, it was really interesting and I believe you succeeded with your goal, with your presentation. Yeah, so good. thank you and congratulations for your webinar today. <laughs> Yes, um, also I would like to add, uh, there is one question, but while the person is writing, just to mention that this webinar is recording, uh, recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube and shared uh, on our webinar page, I believe till the end of the day or uh, maybe tomorrow. So you are all uh, free to use it and share it among your professional network. Uh, so there is a question. Do you plan to publish a paper about your results? Uh, you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> I forgot, sorry. Uh, so do we plan to publish the paper? Yeah, uh, um, on your results uh, or somewhere. It is, um, yeah, it, it will be uh, useful to have everything uh, like, um, in a short version yeah definitely thank you for <laughs> yes it would be really great if you could publish it in some kind of paper or anywhere to be available uh for the people uh around not only here in serbia and balkans or somewhere also in uh, europe and people are uh, thanking you for the great presentation it was really interesting to to hear uh so oh yeah so that we people would like to have also uh, published uh these results so that it, they could cite uh, your findings uh they have uh the research is published on our website oh so, okay yes so uh i think that uh, okay uh i will i can send the link uh, to the people okay i will publish the link again on the facebook page that's yeah and maybe you can share it also with me so so we'll put on yeah. a webinar page uh yeah. so people can can see it directly Definitely. uh can i have the link yeah we, we will have it on the webinar page till the end of the day you can find it there okay okay so uh thank you very much if uh, the just a second excellent job dear anja one question do you have the, can you see your chat maybe um let me let me uh, try oh something is uh -huh. okay yeah. yes i can um uh -huh. so this uh, big uh, question okay yeah um no no we didn't speak about uh, xenophobia and racism but um Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. We didn't touch that. But um, it's it's really interesting topic to to. It's speak maybe about. for the future some kind of add add topic uh, to yes. your research. Okay. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you so much, Tatiana. Okay, so everybody see that there. Everybody's thanking you, and to everybody was really interesting. Uh, I would also like to add that uh, to the participants, if you want to uh, get a, a certificate of attendance of this webinar, you can write it to this email. I, I will write you in chat. And we will de deliver it to your email address. And please, mm -hmm. before you go, just a, a little evaluation poll. We have Nenad also here who, who I will just launch polling. And give floor so, to you, uh, uh, Thank you. I, I would just uh, also like to thank Anja uh, on behalf of Terdezom and the Bridge uh, Project for for delivering this uh, presentation today. It uh, very much um, reiterated the whole the whole let's say uh, issue um, that we are have been trying to address with the Bridge Project. Um, and. Um, Essentially, it's it's sad to see that these um, these issues are 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 so omnipresent in in, in many in many places, and that women and girls, but also uh, boys as well, are are experiencing gender-based violence, you know, both in their countries of origin, but then as we can see in Serbia, uh, while they are in transit or along their migration, 
migratory route. Um, so it was very interesting to to uh, see the testimonies directly. These are, I think, as we have uh, also seen, people would be interested to cite them. These are um, very, very, I think, important things to keep in mind uh, when we design and are thinking about our interventions and all the work that we're doing. So this is why um, I'm very thankful again, and this is why I wanted you to to also take this opportunity today to to, um, to present it. And um, uh, I would like to thank you again. Um, and um, thank you as well, Vesna, for, for all of your support yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for all of the webinars so far. Um, I don't know if we have any, uh, any other questions that were maybe uh, raised in the meantime. But, uh, uh, I saw one question. Yeah, that it's the last one. Uh, uh, not actually, it's not the last one. Um, colleague Miriana asked uh, if we. Um, so she said, like, uh, have you? Uh, do you have any experience with the situation of the woman who left abusive uh, situation yeah. report to the husband? So. Um, as I remember, while I was conducting the research, uh, there was uh, one woman who reported her husband, but the police officers were not um, interested in uh, like uh, proceed with all measures to protect her. So she eventually gave up on uh, reporting. Um, I was, because I was working uh, before for NGO that only works with the women who suffer the violence. I know that there are the cases that women are reporting the violence and it's really important, but in this study we couldn't uh, manage to speak uh, with lots of them, but I know that there are the cases definitely. And the last one? Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, Miriana uh, again shared it. Yeah. I hope I answered. Mirena. <laughs> yeah, she said uh, it was her point. Yes. Uh, so th thank you uh, again very much. Uh, and thank everybody for coming here to this uh, virtual meeting. I believe uh, this way of education and meeting will be some kind of, we, we can say a usual in the next, uh, next I believe, few months. Uh, I wish you all well. And uh, thank you uh, for everything. And uh, please, uh, you, you can uh, be in touch with our webinar, uh, different webinars on the Child Hub, and we will be very glad to uh, see you again here. We wish you a very nice day. Last night, if I could just add one more thing yeah. before, before we wrap <laughs> <Yeah>. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, we still have a minute, I, I think. Um, yeah, sure. So I would um, like to just promote as well as part of the Bridge project, um, we have developed an e-learning course which is available on the Child Hub uh, platform, on the Child Hub Academy. Uh, it is uh, available in a few languages, in, um, in uh, English, uh, Dutch, French, Romanian and Greek. Yeah. And um, we, uh, we have developed this as part of the project, as I said, and it's really uh, focusing on it's for uh, care professionals who are coming into direct uh, daily work, let's say, with um, children and youth, migrant children and youth, and uh, who were, have been exposed or um, uh, were potential victims of gender-based violence. Uh, so this is, uh, it has a number of modules, uh, six, uh, six modules, um, dealing with recognizing gender-based violence, uh, how to how to uh, respond to instances of gender-based violence, referrals, uh, but as well as self-care um, and etc. So I would just uh, encourage you all, if you're interested, of course, to uh, to check it out, to enroll, and um, I it does it's a self-paced um, e-learning course, and it shouldn't take uh, more than an hour, I believe, um, if if you if you do it all at once. Yeah, I found it now on the Chow Hub and okay, share the link. Share it. Yes, I share the link uh, in the chat so you can see it directly. I would, I would just love to thank both of you for making this possible, and uh, Nanad for calling us, and you, Vesna, for really making this this process really easy, and uh, I really enjoyed. Thank you. Great. Thank, thank you. you as well. We also we too. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It was really, really nice. Uh, so. Nena, do you have anything more for the end, maybe? 
Um, I, again, just to thank thank uh, Anja, thank you as well, uh, Vesna, and all the participants for taking the time to, uh, this afternoon. And uh, yeah, to send my best wishes and regards, and um, to say stay safe. Yeah, definitely. Thank you very much. See you soon, hopefully. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank bye you. Bye. 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 bye.